Thank you, Dr. Noor Yazdini and Dr. Ben Diamond for the opportunity to present my paper at this convention. The topic of my paper is experimental investigation and refined load rating of a concrete pan girder bridge. The co-authors for this paper are Dr. Te Tevik, Dr. Husty, Dr. Hurlebos, Dr. Mander, and Dr. Paul. My presentation will include the motivation and objectives for this research, the process of selection, instrumentation, and load testing of a typical concrete multi girder bridge, refined analysis and the impact on load rating, and the findings which will be highlighted in the summary and conclusions. Let's begin with the motivation and objectives for this research. Bridges with capacities below current legal load limits are load posted. The map on the right shows the distribution of over 2,100 load posted bridges in Texas. So, why do load posted bridges matter? because they have significant impact on freight movement and economic vitality. However, there is no clear-cut solution for removing load postings due to different bridge geometries and materials, and the different eras and environments in which the bridges were built. The National Bridge Inventory, NBI, classifies bridges based on their condition as structurally deficient, SD, and functionally obsolete, FO. TextJot adds another classification called substandard for load only, SSLO. In this table, the distribution of the 2,111 load posted Texas bridges across the different classifications is presented. It is more likely to remove load postings for SSLO bridges using more accurate information and refined analysis. As these bridges are further investigated in this study, the 969 SSLO bridges in Texas were further classified based on the type of material and construction. The project investigated the load rating procedure for these four bridge types. This paper highlights the findings for concrete multi girder bridges. We move on to the selection, instrumentation, and load testing of a typical concrete multi girder bridge. Basic load rating analysis of five SSLO simple span concrete multi girder bridges was performed to identify possible areas of opportunity to improve load ratings. The year the bridges were built ranged from 1940 to 2000. The maximum span length lie between 29 to 40 feet, with deck widths ranging from 21 to 35 feet. The LFR rating factors for these bridges lie between 0.5 to 1 for inventory rating and 0.83 to 1.66 for operating rating. It was identified from this analysis that live load distribution factors, in situ material properties, partial end fixity, and refined analysis methods are possible areas of opportunity to improve load rating. The average characteristics of the SSLO simple span concrete multi girder bridges were determined, and bridge CM5 was selected as the typical representative bridge for field testing. It is an off system bridge with an average daily traffic of 250. There are no structural drawings available, and initial analysis was carried out based on information gathered from standard textile structural drawings. The instrumentation plan for bridge CM5 is presented here. The top view of, of the instrumentation bridge is presented on the left. The mid span and end sections are shown below. A pair of strain gauges was installed at 12 measurement locations on the bridge to capture the strain profile at mid span and at the ends of the selected interior and exterior girders. Eight string potentiometers were installed at the mid span of each girder to record the deflections during load tests. Five axorometers were installed at mid span of every other girder, and two axorometers were installed at quarter span lengths and of an interior girder to record the dynamic vibrations of the bridge. One of the challenges faced on site was the heavy rainfall the night before testing. As you can see, the stream was filled with water, and we had already installed the string potentiometer. To prevent water from seeping into the instrument, we tied these um, string potentiometers in trash bags. While on site, we confirmed the bridge dimension, member dimensions and performed non-destructive evaluation 
to determine in situ material properties. The concrete compressive strength was taken to be 48 megapascals, which was greater than the MBE recommended value. Using GPR, the location of steel reinforcement was confirmed to match the textile standard drawing. However, the spacing of the transfer slab reinforcement was greater than that specified in the standard drawing. Bridge DM5 was load posted for a tandem axle load of 24,000 pounds. The textile dump truck used in the load testing was loaded close to this limit. Three test load paths were identified for Bridge CM5, which are path one, path two, and the middle path. The test protocol included both static tests and dynamic tests. Static tests included stop location and crawl speed tests, while dynamic tests were carried out at a speed of 48 and 64 kilometers per hour. Now we look into the refined analysis and impact on load rating. The three-dimensional finite element method model of Bridge CM5 was developed in CSI Bridge using a mesh size of six inches. Following the load testing, the finite element method model was updated to include the increased concrete compressive strength and calibrated for the cracked section behavior. A spring sensitivity analysis was also carried out to calibrate the partial end restraint observed in the field results. The deflection obtained from the strength retention meters shown as data points in the plot in was were in close agreement with the FDM results presented by solid lines. It should be noted that the displacements obtained were small along all paths, hence the difference between the FDM value and the corresponding measurement value may be close to the accuracy rim limit of the strength retention meters. As mentioned earlier, heavy rainfall happened the night before testing. This may have uh, affected the displacements recorded by string potential meters installed at girders two and girders four. The mid-span strain results for the stop location test along path one and middle path are shown here. In this plot, solid lines correspond to test results while dotted lines represent FEM results. The top of the slab is represented by the purple line, the golden line represents the slab girder interface, and the bottom of the girder is represented by the orange line. These strain results were used to determine the neutral axis location for the corresponding girders and compared with the theoretical uncracked and theoretical cracked neutral axis. The neutral axis location determined from the test data were found to be closer to the theoretical uncracked section. It should be noted that small compressive strains were observed at the bottom of girder ends, indicating the presence of limited per partial end restraint. Similar observations were also noticed for the crawl speed test. The natural frequencies and mode shapes of bridge CM5 were obtained from the accelerometer data. As can be seen, for the first three modes, both the natural frequencies and mode shapes obtained from the FEM models match closely with the test results. The live load distribution factors for each girder were calculated using the corresponding deflection and cracked moment of inertia. In these plots, the live load distribution factors along paths one and two for the stop location tests are presented for all girders. The test live load distribution factors are shown in green, while the FDM live load distribution factors are shown in orange. Red denotes the ASHTO standard live load distribution factors, and gray and black denote the ASHTO LRFD live load distribution factors. As you can see, both the specifications generally provide conservative live load distribution factors with the ASHTO LRFD specifications being more conservative. Two levels of analysis are proposed to consider the effect of unintended and fixity in the load rating process. Level one analysis is performed without conducting a load test or FEM analysis. The bridge is load rated using the ASHTO standard specifications, live load distribution factor in level one analysis. 
In level two analysis, refined load rating can be performed through FEM analysis or load testing. In level 2A, the FEM model is updated based on field measurements, while in level 2B, the updated FEM model is calibrated based on load test results. The result from each analysis level for this specific bridge is shown in this table. To conclude, the data collected from the strain potentiometers were found to be more reliable than those obtained from the strain gauges. This may be due to poor bond between the gauge and the concrete or the presence of cracks at that location. The deflection-based live load distribution factors from the FBM model were found to be close to the test deflection-based live load distribution factors. The neutral axis locations calculated from the test results were closer to the theoretical uncracked section. Although the bridge was designed as simply supported, small compressive strains were observed at the bottom of girder ends, indicating the presence of limited partial end restraint. The live load distribution factors calculated based on ASHTO LRFD specifications were quite conservative compared to the ASHTO standard specification slide load distribution factors for the controlling girder. This approach can provide useful guidance for FEM analysis of similar bridge types for refined load rating to determine bridge specific live load distribution factors. Thank you for your attention and your time. Any questions or discussions? Thank you, Ms. Kabir. Um, Thank you. A wonderful job.